Welcome to the Healer Roll Actions Guide. Here we'll go through our roll actions to explain the uses for newbies while still going through multiple or higher end content uses. You should be treating these skills as an extension of your job toolkits, with some actions being extremely key for proper survival. As a healer, your main goal is to keep everyone alive, but your roll actions can do that and much more. This more bit is what is commonly overlooked while being the most important aspect of your roll actions. At the very least, your improved survival and solo content will be proof enough of that. We have six roll actions as a healer job, with each one having a very different effect from the last, meaning a bunch of different situations you'll want to learn how to recognize. We'll start seeing those more as we go through the actions. Let's get checking them now. Before we get into specific skills, I want to emphasize that almost all roll actions are OGCD, off global cooldown, abilities. These can be weaved, used between weapon skills or spell casts. You should have a few of these in your normal toolkit, obviously, but noting that these are almost all OGCD skills emphasizes how easy to use they can be. Level 8, Repose. One of the few GCD roll actions, Repose has a cast and recast time of 2.5 seconds. The MP cost is 600 MP and has a range of 30 yams. It causes a single target to fall asleep for 30 seconds with diminishing returns. This has almost no use outside of overworld solo content. You can put enemies to sleep and then focus down one at a time. Outside of maybe one job or roll quest, this ability to put things to sleep wastes more time than it saves or helps. You are a healer, meaning you could just heal yourself. Anything dangerous enough that you would actually want to sleep it is probably immune. The sole party use I can think of for this is in Brayflox's long stops second boss. The boss summons a second lizard partway into the fight that you can put to sleep the moment it spawns. This gives your party the chance to take out the main boss before killing the second one. It's not important to do though. Level 10, Asuna. Another spell, this has a 1 second cast time and 2.5 second recast. It costs 400 MP and removes a single debuff from yourself or an ally. But not all debuffs can be cleansed. Those that can be removed have a very subtle but very important white line at the top of the icon. Any debuff with this white line is something you can remove. All others, ignore them. There are some fights that are extremely important to have Asuna for. Certain rare fights have enemies that place Doom or Doom-like debuffs on a target with no way to avoid it. The only solution is to cleanse it with the Asuna effect. The only other Asuna being the Warden's Pan from Bard, which means it's all going to be you or your co-healer. There are plenty of other debuffs that are recommended for you to Asuna. Most of the ones you see pop up with a white line, really. Otherwise, there's not much more to it to know. Pay attention to debuffs for the white line and remove them where you can. Some are much more deadly than others, and you'll have to learn which is which with experience, both due to spoilers and just too many examples to list them all. Level 14, Lucid Dreaming. On a 60 second cooldown, this grants you a 55 potency MP regen for 21 seconds. This acts like a dot or hot, ticking on a server tick, every 3 seconds. In total, that means this will tick 7 times. 55 potency meanwhile is 550 with the 0 chopped off. 550 MP is how much this regens per tick, for a total of 3850 MP regen. That is a lot of MP. Some of your powerful tools as a healer are very MP hungry. Even the normal or weaker tools are also still eating MP. You want to be using this anytime you are missing a little bit of MP. Sitting at below 8000 MP, hit Lucid Dreaming to start the regen. Any lengthy encounter will have you hitting Lucid multiple times, basically on cooldown. MP economy is extremely important as a healer. The better your team and the better you get, the less MP you need, but even then, you need some level of MP regen to have enough to go around. If you do not use Lucid Dreaming, you're going to run out of MP eventually. Do not forget this exists. Even good use of Lucid Dreaming can still lead you to bottom out if your party is struggling enough. Raises are extremely expensive at 2400 MP. A couple of those in a fight and you'll be running on fumes. So keep an eye on your MP bar and keep the regen going. Get ready to adjust your performance if you end up running low. Level 18, Swift Cast. On a 60 second cooldown, your next spell is cast immediately with no cast time at all. This includes Raise, which goes from 8 seconds to 0 seconds. 
That is going to be your main desire with Swift Cast. If there is a death and Swift is available, you're going to cut that cast time down to nothing without a second thought. 8 seconds is a lot of time to be made to stand still, not casting any other spells to heal or damage. You just have to sit and wait. Or Swift Cast. The other places you might want to Swift Cast are during movement. You can't just stop to cast a spell a lot of the time. You need to keep moving, but you also need to heal. If you don't have any instant cast skills available, you can use Swift Cast to make something else into exactly what you need. Just don't randomly be using Swift Cast. It's a very nice buff, but if you use it at the wrong time, you could end up not having it available for something more important. Sure, you can get an extra DPS spell out, which is what I tend to use it for, but then someone tends to eat three AoEs and a bean burrito all at the same time and requires an 8 second long race cast. It's great to use as desired, but you may end up sitting on it if you notice your team is struggling, or even just one person needs to be babysat. Level 44? Surecast. On a 2 minute cooldown, Surecast comes with two effects and will remain on you for 6 seconds. The first and main one you will use is that this is a skill that ignores most knockback and draw in effects. This includes another role action that healers have, Rescue. In many boss fights, they will do moves that might not even do damage, only pushing players around. These often come with arenas that you can fall off of or have death walls. These moves go from minor annoyance that might lose you a single hit to potential death. Surecast says nah to that and allows you to ignore certain knockback mechanics entirely. For an example of a current fight that has a huge spotlight on this skill, Dragon Song Reprise Ultimate has a mechanic that essentially requires the use of Surecast to defeat a knockback. Some other attacks in this same fight ignore knockback mitigation. Point is, this truly is an important aspect to get used to. Even if you aren't worried about your damage, learn when to sure cast to negate knockback if only for that purpose. Mistakes happen, and you may actually be in a bad spot or bad angle. You could get knocked off the arena just barely because you weren't as perfectly placed as expected. Better to sure cast and gain the extra damage than die because you stubbornly ignored it. The other use is for solo play or when the tank ends up dying. You can cast spells without being interrupted mid-cast. You may have noticed rarely having a spell cast cancelled after being attacked. Sure cast prevents this entirely, so in solo, you can pop sure cast before an important heal on yourself or such. Though this is mostly only a thing when fighting enemies higher level than you. In party content, this will only come in if the tank has really messed up. You have plenty of instant cast or OGCD heals that don't involve cast times, plus swift cast. You should not be being hit by enemies other than unavoidable damage, which won't ever interrupt you anyway. The tank would have to just be actively not taking enmity, or just flat up died, be it your fault or their own. Ideally, your tank will never mess up or die to need this last ditch effort, and your DPS allies should be higher enmity levels than you, so that leaves the overworld uses. Every little edge you can get is nice, and it all does add up eventually. Be ready to use it for those rarest situations and make liberal use of it to delete knockback moves. Then get sad when you go to use it in a savage fight and still get launched halfway across the arena because it's one of those moves that ignores Surecast. Level 48, Rescue. On a 2 minute cooldown, this causes any target party member to be dragged to your side within a 30 yarm range. You cannot use this outside of combat. Surecast at arm's length, the physical version of Surecast, negate Rescue and some debuffs also prevent rescue from working, mostly bind. This is the most difficult to use of your role actions, and the one most likely to anger team members. Even when used correctly, you could cause your ally to be upset with you because you just randomly started dragging them across the arena. They may have already been in position to dodge an attack, or were taking an attack on purpose that they would heal themselves for afterward or they weren't in danger at all, and your rescue puts them in danger. Rescue is not an instant teleport. It's a very quick, but very much not instant slide across the ground. If the chosen ally slides through some damage along the way, the rescue ended up harming more than it helped. However, when you know how to use rescue correctly, it can be extremely powerful for saving lives. If one player is very obviously struggling, very obviously making tons of mistakes and need a lot of healing, you can force them to dodge things they weren't going to via rescue. 
put them into good positions, or even act as an extra knockback mitigation, gap closer, or gap creator for them. If a melee player gets knocked back from a boss, potentially even launched off the edge, you can quickly rescue them before they fall out of the arena. A second movement ability cancels out the first movement. Some bosses require a player to run out of range of the boss to cause an attack to deactivate or be avoided. You can either immediately rescue the player to the edge of the arena to finish the attack instantly, or use rescue to drag the player back to the boss after they run out of range. It's little things like this that are appreciated, if not outright needed. There's not really anything that requires rescue at all. It's hard to use, but your effort will be rewarded if you learn to use it correctly. Please do not use this haphazardly. That covers all of our healer role actions. These skills cover a lot of issues we may run into as we progress through the game or otherwise help us be better party members. At worst, we can make a small difference in the course of a duty. In the best case, we'll be making or breaking the run with our actions in high-end duties with something like Rescue. Make sure you get a good understanding of these skills, because you can't truly say you're playing your role if you ignore role actions, now can you? Thank you for watching this guide on your healer role actions. I hope you've seen how important role actions can be as part of your toolkit. A dead healer can't keep everyone else alive, and each one improves survival in one way or the other. Be sure to ask questions on the skills if you don't quite understand their uses, and seek to improve just a little bit extra. Take care, and may the power of Anne and Nidhogg's lay waste to your enemies. And a big thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, and an extra, extra special thanks to my big dragons who are... Ashtree Dweller, Eamon al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Zadia Dios de San, Serix, Ethan Olson, Frazier97, Greg, James Hall, JB Hruska, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Marlon Sebo, Mazella, Nick Griffin, Poppins205, T Rogue, Timmy, Tabood, and Zero Two. Thank you all again, and have a good night.